short video showing what we're doing for the 2020 updates to the turbo Buick Regal currently parked waiting for the power plant to go back in with the updated turbo setup larger cam and some cleanup that we're gonna do to the system as we try to push it past the old 11.4 best quarter mile time that we got back in 2009 hopefully this thing will go well beyond that We've got tons of parts coming in lots of cleanup going on and we hope to have this back together and running during this whole coronavirus shutdown and that'll give me time to go through make sure I've got all the right parts in there you can see I'm going back to the original style fans I've got an aluminum bumper support from a Buick Rendezvous Pontiac Aztec going in there along with swapping from an air cooled intercooler to a water cooled one for the ball bearing T4 67 millimeter turbo along with some strut tower braces and some Dorman solid tube trailing arms, just a little bit of suspension work so that it drives around a little bit nicer as well. But we're mainly drag racing this thing, so we need as much engine upgrades as possible. I will continue to post videos as we make more progress on this and hopefully as we get going down the road in the next couple of weeks as everything bolts together. Here are some sped up videos I took while working on the engine. I'll work on making some better ones as things progress further. This first one is just me installing a new cam bolt. I put a fresh dual timing chain on as well since we put about 50,000 miles on this setup already and there's no tensioner for the double roller. You can see I got the torque wrench and bolt ready. It was 74 foot-pounds and the extra 90 degrees was done after I changed tools. I installed the cam before I started taking videos, so I'll get more diligent with that as we go on. This is when I cleaned up the block to bolt the front cover on. I took a lot of time prepping the area making sure the gasket sealed well. This is a pretty important area, making sure since it's gonna be internal hidden away, you got oil sloshing around in there and you've actually got some coolant passages to deal with as well. Then you get to see me clean the original style paper gasket off of the surface of the front cover. Since we've been running a double roller chain, we had a machined oil pump cover the plate inside of the front cover that you see down there with the five bolts but also ran double paper gaskets since they're pretty thin to be safe for the clearance of that double chain <laughs> now this gasket cleaning is a pretty tedious process but everyone likes to show off the glamorous parts of builds so I'll sprinkle some of the boring things in here and there I'll make sure to keep them pretty sped up I kept using the vacuum to eliminate anything staying behind after scraping and then I would start touching it up with a Scotch-Brite. So you can see me cleaning off the, the gasket, the main large pieces that were left behind. And then I come in behind there with a Scotch-Brite pad trying to clean it up a little bit more get a better seal on there that wasn't making me happy enough still so I then moved on to a scotch bright drill pad where I carefully and lightly removed any gasket material that was still behind being careful not to really start digging into the surface and causing it to warp and making the gasket have to fill more area than it had to now I am using the thicker ZZ Performance front cover gasket meant to both accommodate for 
surface imperfections and also give you that thicker material for the double chain but I wanted to still have as good of a job as possible before we got to that point. This also requires cleaning up the bottom surface as that mates to the oil pan and gets silicone RTV to help it seal down there. So that was the last bit you see me scraping off. get ready for cover to get installed and putting RTV in the lower corners to make sure those seal up well. I also spread it along the bottom surface to make sure the oil pan is sealed up too. And with the cover, in case you're wondering, the braided steel line hanging off the back is the oil feed line for the turbo, which is teed off the port supplying the low pressure sensor for the dash. As the cover goes on, I was careful to align the oil pump gear on the crank sprocket to the pump inside the cover, which has its own mating gear for that. I then started placing all the bolts which have Teflon tape to seal the coolant passages some of the upper ones go into. I was double checking the shroud that covers the crank sensor to know where the studs go because they mount that cover to it. I lightly ran them in with the gun before torquing them all to 15 foot-pounds and then adding the extra 40 degrees with the ratchet after that. I will note that I had to reinstall the lower right two bolts to add the crank sensor behind them, which I forgot while recording. Also, there are three oil pan bolts that go up into the bottom of the cover, but we may take the gasket out and replace it, so it'll be seen later. This is my helper getting to take the new Morel lifters from their overnight oil marinade and install them. I had success on stock lifters previously, but I kept the RPMs just over 6,000 when these upgraded cams are actually good for 6,500 to 7,000, which we'll start moving our way towards. These lifters measured the same as stock for push rod length, so we are still using stock push rods and rockers for now with 130 pound valve springs. Thank you.